Hello everyone. All right, so we're back for lecture two, part three. And in this part, we're gonna talk about the types of uh, balances that you can perform, and we're gonna do a practice material balance. So one of, the, one of the balances that you can do is something called a differential balance. Now, that one deals with rates and is often used for continuous processes, where you're looking at one point in time. So for us, in this case, I may have A and B going into my system, and I'm looking at how much A and B are coming out of the system at that same time. And in addition to a differential balance, you can also have an integral balance. Now, in an integral balance, this is gonna deal with amounts and is commonly used for batch processes where you have two points in time. And it can also be used for continuous processes also when you have two points in time. So for us, we may have these at time one, we may have 10 kilograms of A and 20 kilograms of B entering this reactor. And then we look at time two, where we have 30 kilograms of A and B in some amount, might be the same, might be different if this is a reaction vessel. Now, something to be aware of for each unit that we're working with is that the number of independent materials is going to equal the number of components involved with the unit. So in all those previous examples I gave you, I had two independent materials. I had material A and material B. Now, for this next problem that we're gonna be working with, we're gonna be using a distillate, we're gonna talk about a distillation process, which I discussed briefly in part two, and I'm just gonna talk about a little bit more about right now. So for us, with this distillation process, as I said before, it's a process that separates mixtures by heating a mixture and boiling off the components with the lowest boiling point. And distillation is the most commonly used process in industry. And in that, while we use distillation quite often, it actually is also very energy intensive and can cause companies about 40 to 60% of the electric bill because they're that energy intensive. And as a quick reminder, I wanna include a little diagram just to show you that, again, when you have your stream coming into the, the distillation column, you call that a feed, and then the material or the stream that's coming out the top, that would be your distillate because that's the part that you're distilling off, and then everything that's left over coming out the bottom of your column is called the bottom stream of the direction it's it's on the bottom and now we're going to jump into our first material balance problem cool so in this case i have a distillation tower tower that is separating benzene and toluene i have both benzene and toluene flowing in a rate of 500 kilograms per hour the distillate stream has a flow rate of 450 kilograms per hour of benzene and the bottom stream has a flow rate of 475 kilograms per hour of toluene what are the mass compositions of the two exit streams? Now, for this process, which wasn't included, but I'm gonna tell you, is that it is an op it's operating at steady state. And I just um, and so for for us in this problem, this is the diagram that would be associated with this system. So stream one is the the stream entering in, then you have stream two as your distillate stream, and stream three is your bottom stream. Now for the system, because there wasn't any special pieces of information given about what components are in the different streams, we're going to say that each stream has both benzene and toluene because there was no perfect separation. And in real life, you're rarely going to have a perfect separation. So it's good to just assume that we're going to have an imperfect separation. So now what we're going to do is we're going to break down this word problem and identify what pieces of information we have and what variables we know. So I'm gonna break it down. And so for the first piece, we see that benzene and toluene are flowing in at a rate of 500 kilograms per hour. So for us, what that means is that we know what the mass flow rates of benzene and toluene are in stream one. So we know that M1B and M1T are both 500 kilograms per hour, okay? Now, if we keep going, we see that the distillate stream has a flow rate of 450 kilograms per hour of benzene. And as I mentioned before, the distillate stream is, a, is the stream coming out. So we know that in stream two, we have a flow rate of benzene, flow rate for benzene of 450 kilograms per hour. Okay, good. And last, the last piece of information we have is that the bottom stream has a flow rate of 475 kilograms per hour of toluene. So as I said before, bottom stream is the bottom stream. So we see that stream three has toluene flowing out at a rate of 475 kilograms per hour. 
So now that we figured out all the different pieces from this word problem, we can now look at what are the mass compositions of the two exit streams. Okay, but wait. If before we want to try and solve those compositions, the first thing that we're going to need to do is a degree of freedom analysis. Why? Well, that's because we need to make sure that this problem is still solvable. So let's do that degree of freedom analysis. Okay, and as you might remember, the first step is we needed to figure out the number of independent stream variables we have for the system. So for us, we're going to have six independent stream variables because we have benzene toluene in all three of our streams. So the next piece is how many known pieces of information do we have? Okay, and for us, we're going to have four pieces of information. We know the flow rates of benzene toluene in the inlet stream. We know the flow rate of benzene in the distillate stream, and we know the flow rate of toluene in the bottom stream. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look for is how many unknowns we have. So for us, we're gonna take the number of ISVs, subtract the number of knowns, and we have two unknowns. Okay, now we have two unknowns. All right, what do we do now? So for us, we're now going to try and use some pieces of information to continue to help us reduce our degrees of freedom. So for us, we can use a material balance. So we're going to have two material balances available to us. So we can do a material balance for benzene, a material balance on toluene, as well as a, material a total material balance. Now, here's the deal. You can only use two different, or you can use one less than the number of material balances available to you. So for us, since we have two components, we have two independent material balances. It's kind of like the same deal where with the mass, frag, mass compositions, I can use all but one of those mass compositions because I can figure out the final mass composition. Same deal, same deal here, here. I can figure out the final, I can do the final material balance if I had all the other information. So we're gonna have two different material balances. And now if we look at our degrees of freedom, we are down to zero. So we can solve this. All right. Neato. So let's let's do it. Now we're going to focus first on the material balance for benzene. And we're going to start with our general material balance, which as we remember is in minus out plus generation minus consumption equals accumulation. Now, before we use this equation, let's try and simplify it as best we can using the information we have from the problem. In this case, we saw that we have steady state operation so our accumulation is going to go to zero. We also did not hear about any reactions going on in our distillation process. Distillation is often used for just separating out two different compounds, and there is usually no reactions going on in your, separate, in your distillation column. So for us, that's good news. We can now eliminate, eliminate our generation and consumption terms. And we now have a simplified material balance of in equals out. And for benzene, we're going to say that we have we have benzene coming in from stream one, we have some benzene coming out in stream two, and we have benzene coming out in stream three. So M1B equals M2B plus M3B. So we, we can now use the values we have for benzene in, in our system. So we knew that we had 500 kilograms per hour coming in, we have 450 kilograms per hour of benzene coming out in the distillate, and the leftover has to be in stream three. And for us, we'll see that the, the flow rate of benzene in the bottom stream is 50 kilograms per hour. All right, so we figured out one piece of unknown information. And now let's go to the, let's go to do a toluene material balance. And we're gonna, and again, the same concepts apply to this toluene material balance. So we have this general material balance of in minus out plus generation minus consumption equals accumulation. But again, we can eliminate the generation, consumption, and accumulation terms for the same reasons we did it for benzene. And now we have a simplified material balance of in equals out. And now we're looking at toluene. So we see that we have toluene coming into our system. And that toluene is going to equal the toluene exiting in the distillate as well as the bottom stream. And for us, we had 500 kilograms per hour of toluene coming in. We don't know how much toluene is coming out in the distillate stream. And we know how much time is coming out in the bottom stream, which is 475 kilograms per hour. And now if we just rearrange everything and solve for M2T, 
we're going to see that we have 25 kilograms per hour of toluene in the distillate stream. But are we done yet? No! We need to get the mass compositions for streams two and three. So now let's let's do that. And we're gonna first start, start off with benzene and solve for the mass fraction of benzene in stream two. And for this, we're gonna take the, we'll take the amount of benzene in stream two, which is 450 kilograms per hour, and divide it by the total mass of stream two, which would have been the benzene contribution of 450 kilograms per hour, plus the toluene contribution, which in this case is 25 kilograms per hour. So we have 450 divided by 475, giving us a mass fraction of 0.947. And now we can do the same thing for stream three with regards to the mass fraction of toluene. And for this, again, we're gonna take the amount of toluene in the, bot in the bottom stream. In this case, it's 475 kilograms per hour, and then divided by the total mass of stream three. So the 475 plus 50 kilograms per hour of benzene. And now we see that the mass fraction of toluene in stream three is then gonna be 0 0.905. All right, now before we call this case closed, what we're, la what we're finally gonna do is just check to make sure that all these numbers add up. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna actually use our total material balance because as I mentioned before, that total, that total material balance is an added piece, but it's not really something beneficial that will reduce our degrees of freedom. It can now be just used as a check because if the material balances for benzene and toluene worked out, then the, the total material balance should also work out. And so we're gonna do that. So for our total material balance, we have the mass of stream one should equal the masses of stream two and stream three that are leaving our system. And so for us, we had 1,000 kilograms per hour entering the system. We have 475 kilograms per hour exiting in the distillate stream and 525 kilograms per hour exiting in the bottom stream. And when we look at these numbers, we sum them up, we see that we have 1,000 coming in and 1,000 coming out. And for us, that's a confirmation that we have done this material balance correctly. Neato, awesome. Congratulations, you've now done your first material balance. Great job. And just to recap, we talked about the types of material balances and we got to do a practice round on a material balance. And this is gonna conclude lecture two. Stay tuned for lecture three, coming soon. Bye class.